The next story may sound fabricated, but it is quote unquote allegedly true, and has circulated the internet if you do a little digging. It was an urban legend that occurred around 2004-2005 in the city of Cuernavaca in Morelos, Mexico. The following animation portrays a dramatized version of the alleged event. All parties will be given aliases to protect the identities of all involved. There was a story so implausible that I would shake my head and roll my eyes when I ever heard my colleagues talking about it. However, all of this changed when someone in my family experienced the same thing, prodding me to withdraw every ounce of doubt. Three years ago, my brother and his pal had just left a drinking party at a nightclub. They were so wasted it was difficult to even book a cab home. So as they tread across the long paved roads, struggling to avoid passing cars, they saw what appeared to be a brightly lit domicile in the distance. As they approached the light source, they realized that it wasn't a house, but a McDonald's fast food restaurant. They glanced through the glass windows and feasted their eyes on the menu displayed on the counter, delighted to see very few customers. After all, it was past midnight, and not so many people were expected to be out at this hour. Farnished after a long walk, they decided to order some Big Macs and flump on a bench outside the restaurant where a statue of Ronald McDonald was sitting comfortably at the edge. Staring at the statue, they noticed its smile seemingly jolly and its eyes eerily gazing back at them, causing them to feel reluctant before they eventually looked at each other and <laughs> laughed at the childish thought, brushing it aside. <sighs> a lit night, Pedro. I'll never forget it, my brother said as he took an enormous bite. Dude, you see that thing was giving me a bubble? She was bad, wasn't she? I might have to take her to McDonald's for a first date. <laughs> Pedro winked while patting him on the back. Well, I'm sorry, dude. I can't hold it anymore. The sour taste in my brother's mouth made him wretch. And so, unable to contain it, he headed to the trash bin where he threw up for the next couple of minutes, leaving his friend all alone with the statue on the bench. Having lost the strength and interest to finish the burger, Pedro thought of taking a nap on the Ronald McDonald statue's lap. And as he began to shut his eyes, he grumbled and said, Ugh, oh, my headaches have gotten worse. I wish I could just die. Then, a creepy voice replied, Be careful what, what you, you wish for. Ah! Pedro jumped, wondering for a moment where the voice might have emanated from. However, as he listened to cars honking and tree branches falling, he was convinced it was all in his head. See, Pedro? This is what happens when you get drunk. He told himself as he resumed his nap. Then, amidst the silence, Pedro sighed and said, I'm so tired. Moments later, the same voice from before spoke to him and replied, That makes the two of us. Before Pedro had any chance to react, the statue grabbed his head with both hands, tightening its vice grip as Pedro wailed in agony. Ah, somebody help me! Even as he begged the clown to stop, it showed no remorse and continued to apply immense pressure on his skull until his entire head was squished to smithereens. When my brother finally returned to his friend, he dropped his burger in utter terror. Then, as he saw Pedro's eyeballs roll across the floor, he screamed. He instantly woke from a semi-stupor, banging on the door of the McDonald's. Somebody help me! Please let me in! However, to my brother's horror, McDonald's had already closed, and no one else was there. So, as he glanced at the bench behind him, the statue was now standing erect with a menacing gaze, showing off its razor-sharp teeth. In a split second, my brother made a run for it into the woods. Although he considered this nothing but mere imagination, the sound of his footsteps quickly catching up to him were all too real. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Moments later, the evil clown grabbed his arm as he tried to break free. That's when the clown rips my brother's arm off, leaving him on the ground as he wailed in sheer agony. The clown growled as it delighted itself in a sumptuous meal. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. I'm loving it! I'm loving it! I'm loving it! With his adrenaline rushing, my brother got to his feet, <laughs> heedless of the immense pain. Then, he ran away from the woods until he eventually arrived home. As he locked the door behind him, he ran to the living room and dialed 911 with his remaining arm. His hand was uncontrollably shaking as he waited for an officer to pick up the call. When he was finally able to speak to someone, my brother said, wincing at the pain of his severed arm. Please send the cops! I know this is hard to believe, but Ronald McDonald is after me, and he's about to kill me! Okay, sir, I'm sorry, but you need to slow down and say it more clearly this time. Do you understand? But I don't have time! Like I said, Ronald McDonald is on his way to kill me! You mean... The clown, sir? The officer asked with a hint of sarcasm and irritation. Yes, ma'am! Please hurry! Sir? Then, suddenly, 
The cop's voice turned from annoyance to delight. You just made my day. To be honest, I was told there was going to be some kind of initiation since this is my first week in the office. So I'm partly sorry for ruining the surprise. But it's a good one, sir. You got me. <laughs> no, 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 no. This isn't a prank, lady. Send someone fast, please. I'm begging you. Well played, sir. Well played. My brother panicked. The officer then hung up on him. Moments later, my brother heard a loud thud on the door, followed by constant banging. Come on, you're no fun! Let me in! The clown said in a demonic voice, We can do this the easy way or the hard Choose wisely! <laughs> As the clown pounded louder, my brother only felt more anxious. Leave me alone or I will call the cops! The cops already hung up on you, dipshit! Now open the door! If you don't open up this very second, I'm gonna release all my Big Mac sauce on your front door! <laughs> Finally, my brother decided to grab a knife from the kitchen and face his pursuer head on. If the cops don't do anything, I will, he told himself, mustering every ounce of courage he had in his body. My brother looked through the peephole as he listened to the clown's incessant laughter. However, strangely enough, he was nowhere to be seen. Despite my brother's reluctance, he opened the door, ready to strike the clown at will. But out of nowhere, the clown quickly wrapped its large hands around my brother's head, squeezing the life out of him. Ah, let go of me, you freak! That's when my brother began to gouge at Ronald's eyes with his remaining hand while being suspended in midair. By some miracle, he managed to dig his fingers deep inside the crevices of the clown's eye sockets and rip his eyeballs out. That's when the clown released my brother from its tight grasp. My brother sprinted while weeping convulsively as he flagged down a moving vehicle to bring him to the nearest hospital. When I heard about my brother's story, my parents and I wanted to report this to the police. The security cameras outside the restaurant recorded the incident. However, McDonald's paid off all the damage expenses, including my family's debts, law enforcement, and all parties involved, coercing us to keep the security tapes confidential. But rumor has it the word got out to the public which caused multiple McDonald's franchises throughout the country to replace their Ronald McDonald benches with ordinary benches. Since then, my brother has been in a coma, almost irresponsive. My entire family avoids all McDonald's restaurants, wary of a clown sitting on a bench. <laughs> The next story is an urban legend inspired by the notorious Ronald McDonald, and of course the popular Big Mac from McDonald's. We wanted to animate the origin story of what caused the Big Mac to be what it is today, seeing as traditional hamburgers all look generally the same with the Big Mac being the exception. Here's a disturbing animation for all the Nightmare Fuel fans out there. Just know that we definitely emphasize the Big in Big Mac. Have you ever wondered why the classic Big Mac always had two patties in it? Maybe it's to stand out from the competition. I beg to differ, since hearing about the most uncoveted secret that they've been keeping confidential for all these years. For those that hear my story, don't say you heard it from me. The story happened to a friend of a friend of mine. We'll call one of the guys Harold and his fellow acquaintance Kumar for the sake of the story. Apparently, it all started when the pair were at Harold's house, watching TV and getting under the influence. I don't know what their choice of beverage or whatever was, but it sure did give them bloodshot eyes. After about a dozen sitcoms, both of them suddenly looked at each other dead in the eyes and shouted in unison, I got the munchies! You got any food? Come on, man, I know your mom probably hooks you up with leftovers from a restaurant. My mom works at a massage parlor, you idiot! Sheesh, well, I could use a happy ending, too. <laughs> the pair both head to the kitchen to check if there was any food remaining in the fridge. But to their dismay, there was nothing but an expired loaf of bread with mold growing on it. Kumar then suggests that they order some takeout. Harold immediately shuts down Kumar's request, attributing his reasons to being broke and not owning a single dime to his name since his last retail job. They both then mutually decide to go for a midnight stroll and find the nearest fast food venue to relieve them of their munchies. Dude, look, there's a McDonald's down there. I think we should hit it up. Do we have a choice? There isn't a White Castle or any other restaurants open, Mr. Harry Nuts. As they approach the McDonald's, they encounter something bizarre in front of the parking lot. There lied an enormous piece of round bread with a huge slice of cheese on top of it. The pair stood there dumbfounded. Why would the staff leave such a large piece of bread in front of the restaurant like that? And how did such a food exist in a dimension that size? Nonetheless, 
Harold brushes the notion off as some silly promotion for an upcoming hamburger of McDonald's. As the two head over to the front, they notice that the restaurant was closed, and the only way they were going to get food was at the drive-thru. That's when Kumar storms off towards the drive-thru menu, scanning it like a hungry dog hoping to get an end to his munchies. When the pair finally came to a consensus on what they wanted to order, they approached the drive through window and found a large bundle of red cotton protruding from the inside. Dude, am I tripping or are you seeing what I'm seeing? Looks like strawberry cotton candy. Okay, well I ain't eating that. It probably has debris and bird crap in it. Out of nowhere, the red cotton yanked through the window and into the restaurant. The two glanced through the window, trying to find any staff that might have been lurking inside. I'm not loving it! Ah, dude, I think I'm hallucinating! Is that... are you...? That's when a giant face of Ronald McDonald appeared from inside the drive through window. The pair couldn't comprehend if they were faced with a behemoth in the flesh, or if this was just a figment of their under-the-influence stupor. The clown then makes it clear that he wasn't pleased with Kumar's remark, saying, Don't ever talk bad about my luscious hair like that, you little rodent! You wish you could have an afro like this! Now may I please take your order? Dude, this is some kind of robot. Like those animatronics at Chuck E. Cheese. I I'll get a hamburger, sir. Yeah, I'll get a hamburger too. Would you both like to be a part of the grand promotion of the Big Mac? It's our new McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> uh, sure, dude. As long as we get our food ASAP. We got the munchies. Indeed. <laughs> and how would you like to pay, sir? I'll take care of it, dude. Credit card, please. Well, unfortunately, there's no ATM around here. So you'll have to pay inside! <laughs> the clown then extends both his arms to the window and grabs hold of Kumar, yanking him inside. Ah! What the hell is going on? Harold tried prying the window open with his bare hands, but it was locked from the inside. He then tried opening the front door, but it wouldn't budge. In a fit of hunger and rage, Harold heads back to the drive through window and begins slamming his fists against the glass while yelling, Open the door, I'll make sure McDonald's fires you, you stupid clown! Suddenly, <gasps> something catches Harold's eyes that made him run towards the McDonald's pole and climb. In an instant, Ronald McDonald climbs out the drive through window, revealing himself to be a giant, a modern David versus Goliath. Harold held on for dear life, staring up at the eyes of the Leviathan. The clown then pinches the pole and begins to shake it around while Harold screams for dear life. Ah! Leave me alone, I'm calling the cops! I bet you're used to taking it on a pole! <laughs> the clown then grabs Harold and tosses him toward the front of the restaurant, landing on the enormous bread topped with cheese. That's when the giant began to maniacally assemble the so-called Big Mac, suffocating Harold with another piece of bread. He then topped it off with a few condiments, then with Kuma, and then, finally, the crown to top it all off. This marks my territory! The world will now know what the Big Mac is! We shall rule all fast food chains and restaurants! <laughs> I'm loving it! I'm loving it! I'm loving it! This is one of the most psychotic stories on the channel. Brace yourself. It happened years ago at a McDonald's located in Millville, New Jersey. The photo is intentionally blurred for obvious reasons, so the majority of you may already know what's going on. But for those who don't, here's a dramatized version of the alleged occurrence. One day, I took my daughter out as she passed all of her exams in school, and we decided to indulge in some Big Macs. So, as we entered through the glass doors, I was concerned when I saw my daughter hide behind my back, shaking as she tugged on my pants. What's the matter, Whitney? I thought you loved this place. I asked, patting her on the head to calm her down. Then, moments later, without uttering a word, she pointed a trembling finger at the man by the counter, who was staring at her with a terrifying gaze and unsettling grin. At first glance, it was apparent that he was one of the staff. However, among all the employees there, he was the only one who stood out, and not in a good way. Hence, I approached him and asked, Excuse me, is there something on my daughter's face? If you've got a problem, just tell me. The man didn't say anything. 
Instead, he laughed and repeatedly glared like someone with a mental disorder. <laughs> I didn't want to offend him even though he gave me the creeps, but I couldn't understand why the restaurant would hire someone like him. I noticed how much free time he had on his hands, since most staff and customers avoided him 90% of the time, treating him like a ghost. I felt sorry for him at one point, because he might have been suffering from a condition that no one else understood. So, after leaving my daughter on the chair, I approached the man and allowed him to take my order. I'll have two Big Macs, two large fries, and two sundaes, please. Are you sure you want those, baby? I wouldn't order those if I were you. And why is that? I wouldn't want you to lose those McCurs. How about some cardio at my house later to sweat off the McCalories? Unfazed, I replied politely. No, thank you. My daughter and I have been here several times before, and we order the same thing every time. Once again, he laughed tumultuously, catching the attention of everyone in the restaurant. I felt so embarrassed that I instantly regretted giving him a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I raised my hand to call for another staff member, the man grabbed my arm tightly and handed over a Happy Meal box with his other hand, saying, Don't worry, baby. I'll go get your order. Here's a Happy Meal for our date later. Netflix and chill, baby! <laughs> He was so creepy and unprofessional, to say the least. There was a small glimpse of hope when he gave us a free Happy Meal, but that, of course, didn't last. When I opened the Happy Meal box, it was empty. The only thing there was a small hole cut out in the bottom. I instinctively wanted to strike the man in the face. However, seeing my daughter's face reminded me that I was here to celebrate with her. So, to avoid ruining the mood, I simply handed him the payment and ignored him all the way through. Mom, I want to leave. My daughter said, still trembling like she did earlier. Honey, that man is not going to hurt you. Besides, I'm right here. I told her, hoping she'd be more at ease. But then, she pointed to the man again and said, He's still looking at me though. As I turned my gaze toward the man, he was there idling an elbow on the countertop, constantly giggling as he eyed my daughter maliciously. For a moment, he reminded me of the Joker, who laughed like a maniac minus the green hair or the famous purple suit. <laughs> Later on, I saw him conversing with the restaurant's manager, and while he was being reprimanded, all he did was laugh. Finally, having lost his patience, the manager began to threaten the man, saying, If you don't do your job, you're fired! You got that, you piece of shit? So, as the other employees attempted to pacify their manager, the Joker was left with a warning. If he didn't do his job, today would be his last. Some customers were actually spooked by what they saw, prompting them to leave the restaurant. So, moments later, when I was called to the counter to finally get our Big Macs, fries, and ice creams, I was persuaded to do the same thing. As I took the paper bag containing the food, I noticed the lunatic snicker, saying, I hope you enjoy your meal. I had a little extra sauce in there. <laughs> I reluctantly extended my gratitude and left with my daughter. Then, as we got into the car, my daughter opened the paper bag and grumbled about a foul stench. So, naturally, I took a closer look and when I brought it to my nose, I accidentally dropped the paper bag, instantly recognizing the source of this putrid scent. Hence, I picked it up again, and upon inspecting the contents, I saw a brownish substance with the soil's texture. However, based on my experience, I knew too well that it was something a lot more unpleasant than mere soil. Holding my daughter's hand, I stormed back into the restaurant and yelled, Where's the manager? I need to speak with him right now! One of the concerned staff approached me and asked, What seems to be the problem, ma'am? Perhaps there's a way I can help you without having to inform the manager. The young man pleaded. Tell your manager I'm going to sue this restaurant for poor sanitation and service. I replied, with my arms akimbo. The manager must have heard me screaming, and so he left the office and approached me, apparently concerned. Ma'am, how can I help you? I threw the paper bag on the floor with animosity and said, Is this how you treat your customers? 
Are you even doing your job as a manager? The food I got has crap in it. Baffled, the manager picked up the paper <gasps> bag and upon sniffing it, he almost threw up. Moments later, the maniac who had taken my order earlier came to the dining area laughing incessantly. I told you I added something extra! He exclaimed, without a tinge of remorse. What the hell is wrong with you? You're not gonna get away with this. Whoever told you I was trying to get away? <laughs> <laughs> he said, laughing minatorily. Then, in the blink of an eye, he grabbed the paper bag, took the burger, pinned me against the wall, and shoved it in my mouth. Well, how do you like the taste? It's rather unique, isn't it? <laughs> he said, his mouth drooling and his eyes round and menacing. The manager and the other staff tugged on the lunatic's shirt until he fell to the floor. The remaining customers contacted 911, and soon the culprit was arrested. For the next couple of weeks, my daughter would invite me to Burger King instead, unable to move on from the Joker at McDonald's. That's when I realized that he wasn't autistic and that everything he did was intentional.